John 1, Ephesians 6. Let's look in Ephesians 6 first very quickly. Galatians, Ephesians. We ought to sing that song more so everybody learns the books of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy. Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James. 1st Peter, 2nd Peter. Three Johns, Jude, and Revelation. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 6, the Bible says in verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And um, I want to just tell everybody that when with God doing what he's doing with our church. Be aware that Satan hates it. God will allow Satan to buffet us for what we do. It's part of the job. It is a taste of Calvary. We follow Jesus, that's what the communion, when we take the Lord's Supper, we are communing with His body, which is broken, and His blood, which is shed. And we say in that, in that thing that we do, I hate to call it ritual, I hate rituals, but in that commandment that we're given, we are saying that we are following Jesus all the way to the cross. And we're not going to stop. So we will have a taste of Calvary. We will have a small portion of what it's like to be buffeted. What it's like to have stripes laid on our back. What it's like to have the burden of the blessing of other people. The burden of that other people have in their life and us taking that on ourselves, taking the responsibility of that. So, and you know what? It's not fun to go through it, but when you go through it and look back, you understand that that was God's way of keeping us where we belong. Not thinking too highly of ourselves. Not overreaching uh, things or not trying to be above everybody else because look at what we did. And so it's okay that we are wrestling against our enemies, sometimes daily. Amen? So put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These are all devils now. Principalities. And I, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but it's popped in my head today. Isn't it interesting that we had a famous rock star who named himself Prince? I don't think that was an accident. I think the spirits that were in this man were principalities. I think that's, I think that's what that was. Um, Against powers. And then here we are against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Because the, the antidote, the cure for darkness is what? Light. And before we give them bread to eat for their bodies... We give them bread to eat, and we give them light. You remember when Jonathan and his soldier that was with him were marching against the enemy, and Saul had forbidden anybody from eating until all the enemies had been put down. Saul was very intense in that way, but he was very, not really thinking right. And Jonathan didn't hear that, and Jonathan was very weary, and he saw a beehive and honeycomb and honey dripping from it 
<clears throat> falling to the ground and he took his rod and stuck it down there and ate the honeycomb and ate the honey. And the Bible says his eyes were enlightened. <clears throat> what happened was he got a big dose of that sugar. That sugar high that his cells were starving and his liver couldn't produce from the fat in his body, couldn't produce it fast enough and he was starving. And as soon as he got that sugar, his eyes were lightened. The Bible says the entrance of thy words giveth light. And what happens is all that sugar gets put into the cells and the cells literally burn that sugar. Burn it, which creates two things, light and heat. That's what it does. This Bible's right, amen? So when we wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this world, the only way to fight them is is with light. It's the only thing that works. So John chapter 1. Had my finger there and let it go. John chapter 1 is the entrance of the light. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him, meaning the word and Christ and the Bible, in him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. And it's no wonder that those who live in darkness are ruled over by devils who want to keep them in darkness. Amen? Because that's how they rule. That's where they get their power from, is people being in darkness. And when the light shines, those stars, that moon, cannot outshine the light of the Word of God, and they lose. Instantly they lose. And we see this happen every single day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and I want us to pray... For, let me read the text message that I got. Wyatt was his name. He passed away at 2.15 this afternoon. So, pray for Wyatt's mother. Um, because there is an added... I would say an added thorn to the passing of this child in her. And there's something I'm not telling you that I know. And it is on t this death is on top of something else that was in her life. And when older folk pass away, we sort of understand it. When babies die, we question. We question God. We question why. And I am not ever really wise enough to answer that question. So, you have to trust God. You have to. You have to trust that He's wise. That His ways are higher than our ways. And His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And um, know that when we are changed and we are made new, we will then understand why. But for now, we have to trust. We have to trust. Not easy. I've been through it. Some of you have been through it. And it's not easy. But they're really, God leaves us really with no other way. Amen. So I want you to pray for Wyatt's family, pray for his mother, and pray for all that this affects. Pray for, Sister Pam called me, how you doing? Everybody turn around and wave, Sister Pam. And all, everybody else that's watching, we love you. But she called today, and she said she was listening to Handel's Messiah. And she thought of me. Why? Because I can sing it well? No. Because I said... That in my opinion, it is the greatest combination of scripture 
and music. I think that when we are going to praise God, we should give Him our very best. Now, some people, their best may not be as good as other people's best, but it doesn't matter. Some of us remember Eddie that used to sit back here, and Eddie made it a point to sing as loud as he possibly could, and he couldn't hit most of the notes, and we didn't care. Because what was in his heart was he wanted to sing to God. And God gave us music to sing back to him. And so Pam was listening to that and she was wiping tears from her eyes because of the music and the scripture. And she called just to say she loves everybody and she's doing okay. She misses Keith, but she knows where he is and she's jealous. Amen. Father in heaven, we love you. And Lord, we miss people that are not here with us like they used to be at Christmas time. But Father, we understand that they are in a better place. And there are days, Father, that we long to be in that place. We crave heaven. And that's a good thing for us because this earth it just gets to where there's really not much here left to live for. But Father, we rejoice at those who have gone before us. We would not bring them back. They would not come back. So, Father, we are like David. He shall not come to me, but I shall go to him. The Father, bless Sister Pam and bless all those, Lord, in our church that could not make it. We love them. We ask you to bless them. And Father, be with Wyatt's family and his mother. And Father, I pray, God, that you would not be harsh to her, but you would love her and have compassion on her. Know, Father, that her sick baby has been healed and he is very, very safe in your arms. He will never be sick again. He'll never hurt. He'll never need doctors. He'll never need needles. He is whole with a new body. So Father, give her blessing. We don't know her, but our hearts reach out to her tonight. We ask you, God, to bless her. Father, bless your word tonight. Give us, give us light. Give us the cure for darkness. And those who are in darkness, who are ruled over by very evil devils, who want them in darkness. God, we pray for them, that they would be taken out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Bless your word tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people would say, Amen. Amen. Turn to Job 38, or you can turn to Ephesians 5, because I'm going to deal with that. But let me start out again with Job 38. I've used this verse before, but I'm going to mention it again. In this context, Job said, or actually God said this to Job. Job wrote it down. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Power, see, we have principalities, powers. Then we have the rulers of the darkness of this world. And the rulers of darkness of this world, those evil angels, they, they're only... Concern, their only role, their only function is to rule over people of this world, people in this earth, to rule over them, to perpetuate their darkness. Who remembers the darkness that you used to be in? Remember those dark days. And there were, the, these devils sent people whether it was preachers, whether it was false teachers, gurus, books that you read that had vain words in them that were dark counsel. Their intention was to keep your mind in darkness so that they could rule over you because they know that if the word of God was ever to show up to you, that they no longer would be able to rule over you because their light is minuscule.
compared to the light of the Son of God. Somebody say amen. So Ephesians 5 verse 6 says, Let a man deceive you with vain words. Vain words. And I'll say this. Any words that are A, not the words of God in your Bible. B, not in coordination with the words that are in your Bible. In other words, I can preach to you and, and my hope is that my words are in coordination with what God says. Does that make sense? That I, I am to help bring you light and understanding of what God said. But God's word is the pure light. And that light does shine from me or through me or out of me as I teach you. If, if my words match the word of God then those also are, I'm helping to bring the light to you. All right? Those who would contradict God's word, they are vain words and they are darkness. They bring dark counsel to your mind. Because with my words or somebody's words, they're trying to get you away from the pure word of God. So how do they do that? They bring in false Bibles, NIV, New American Standard, uh, revised standard. All of these are vain words whereby they try to darken the counsel that are in people's minds. They bring darkness to people and there are devils. There are spirits in those books. I believe that. As there is the spirit of God in this book, there are dark spirits, principalities and rulers of the darkness of this world that are in false Bibles. False Church doctrines, false doctrines like you must be water baptized. If you're if you're saved, then you have to be water baptized. And if you're not water baptized, you're not saved. That's dark words. That's a false gospel. That's vain words. So let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not, verse 7, be not ye therefore partakers with them. So I'm not allowed to have somebody in this church teaching you with something that is not this Bible. Not supposed to, and I won't do that. I won't, if I don't know them, if I don't know their stand, if I don't know a little bit about their life and have heard that over the years they are consistently believers in the King James Bible. If I don't know that, they don't, I don't let them talk here. And I've been recommend, I've been recommended people. I've been recommended singing groups to come and sing. And, I, and I've listened to music. some of their music's good. But I don't know them and I don't know their stand on the Bible because I will tell you that singing groups by and large try to become whatever that church is. Because they want the crowd to enjoy them. They want to sell records and I, I get that. And, but they compromise wherever they go. Okay. And it, and, Brother Reg Kelly, he knows a lot of groups, especially a lot of gospel bluegrass. And he said, Mike, every one of them that I've known have compromised over the years just so they can go in churches and sing to them. They'd almost have to. Amen. So pray for some of the groups that we know. Okay. So be you not therefore partakers with them for you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Once again, the cure for darkness is the light of the Word of God. Back in Job, chapter 10, turn there, Job. We're going to go from Job to Psalms to Proverbs through the Old Testament. So let's go ahead and turn back to Job, chapter 10, verse 20. Five, four, three, two, one, verse 20. Are not my days few? Cease then and let me alone, that I may take comfort a little. Before I go whence I shall not return. Even, watch this. Even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. 
Now, what did God promise us? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So he's talking about, think about a casket. When that lid closed, that's, there's no lights in caskets. And even if there was, it wouldn't do any good. But it's a land of darkness as darkness itself. It is made, I'm just sort of guessing here at what God's saying, but it is made of dark, as, as heaven is actually made of light. And the Bible says that God clothes himself with light as a garment. He puts on light. He wears light as a garment. And some people, we were talking about this, Pam called and when she said, are you and the guys in there talking? Yeah. She knew what time it was. We were talking about, these protesters protesting like Chick-fil-A and other corporations that try to stand for what's right. And I remember some of them wearing T-shirts that said, one lady said, I'm going to hell and I'm proud of it. She's clothed in darkness. Do what? Yeah, she'll get there. She won't be so proud then. One lady wearing a t-shirt that said, I had an abortion and I'm proud of it. You killed an innocent child. And you're wearing a shirt telling the world that you are glad that you killed your own baby. That's darkness, people. That's putting hell on. You're wearing, you have clothed yourself with darkness. You're four times in the Bible, we looked it up, four times in the Bible, God says, I will clothe them with shame. Clothe them with their own shame. So a land of darkness says darkness itself and the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. This is, to me, matches what John just said concerning the light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended it not and those that are in darkness will even take what is light they'll take the word of god and convert it into darkness by corrupting it by making it it's like the jehovah's witness in the beginning was the word the word with god and the word was a god they've just taken the light and not comprehended it and converted it into darkness because you have people all over the world now who believe that jesus was a God, but not the most high God. It's a place without any order. So let me just give you this. There are churches where once certain events happen, like they start with the music, somebody will jump up, start running. Somebody will start convulsing. You'll have people speaking in weird, weird, bizarre tongues all over the place. People rolling in laughter. There is absolute chaos there. There is no order. And God said, let all things be done. How? Decently and in order. And you can tell that there is a hell spirit in that place because there is no order. That's how you can tell. Where there's chaos, where there's disorganization, where there is no order, where nothing is understood... That's the rulers of the darkness of this world in that church and not the Holy Ghost. Where the light is as darkness. Look at Job 12, verse 21. He poureth contempt upon princes and weakeneth the strength of the mighty. He discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. See, this is the light now. Here's the, here's the cure for darkness. Is light. When I close my eyes for the very last time, my hope is that Christ will shine and bring me light at that moment. That's my prayer. That God will bring out to light the shadow of death. Verse 23, he increaseth the nations and destroyeth them. He enlargeth the nations and straighteneth them again. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. 
They grope in the dark without light, and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. Notice that he's talking about the heart of the chief of the people. In every, in every, uh, every government area, whether it's federal government ruling over the whole nation, or state government, governors, state legislators, local judges, mayors, county executives, whoever is in charge, if those people are in darkness, you can mark it down that they will rule in darkness. They have rulers of the darkness of this world working through them. We had a county executive in Jefferson County that actually made it through two terms and I've known him for most of my life. He attends a church in this area. He and I have shared many things. He used to be my insurance man. And I know that he has worked hard to keep out of Jefferson County the casinos. There's no casinos in Jefferson County. And I hope to God that there never is. We don't need him. But what's going to happen is, he's not, he's not going to be in office any longer. And somebody else is going to come in. And more than likely, if that man is in darkness, he's going to bring darkness to this county. We don't need any more methamphetamine dealers. We don't need any more marijuana dealers. We don't need any more gamblers in this county. We don't need it. We don't need their money. But that's what's going to happen. Because darkness takes the chief of the people and they wonder and stagger without light like a drunk man. That's what your Bible says. That's why, that's why things go bad because our leaders are bad. Psalm 74, verse 20. Have respect unto the covenant. Look at your Bible. Have respect unto the covenant. That means I think we ought to hang the Ten Commandments in every courthouse, schoolhouse, jailhouse, congressional house. They ought to hang a copy of the Ten Commandments to show respect unto the covenant. Because the covenant is light. When Moses received the Ten Commandments, he comes down from, from the Mount Sinai. What is, what's going on with him? He's shining so bright that they cannot look at him. That is the covenant brought light to those people. And what did they want? Cover that up. Cover that up. It's like the... Um, who is it? I almost said NAACP, but that's not who it is. The people that hate Christians in schools and ACLU. They want to bring darkness because they want the Ten Commandments covered up. They, want, they don't want anybody seeing that because it's light and it brings light to mankind. Now watch this. Have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Now as you ponder this, where there's darkness and where the rulers are dark, there's going to be abortion clinics. Abortion clinics are habitations of cruelty. Let me, let me hear you say amen. amen. It is cruel. It is fundamentally wicked. And we are robbing American citizens of their rights. And for what reason? They've done Nothing wrong. You see, I believe that they are conceived in light and they are human beings at the very moment of conception. They are not part of that woman's body because they have their own unique DNA. They are not a part, a tissue of that woman's body and she does not have the right to take away the God-given rights to that human being in that womb. Can I get an amen? This Bible's right. That is a habitation of cruelty. 
wherever darkness rules in this nation, the liberal mindset is it in itself a habitation of cruelty. They do not favor life and light. And they're all hypocrites. John and I were talking about that. Okay? Every other religion is full of hypocrites. They say one thing and do another. Proverbs 4.19, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And so here's what happens. Rulers of the darkness of this world will always keep people in darkness and lay stumbling blocks before them to cause them to perpetually be falling. I mean, how would you be if you went totally blind and you had no dog, you had no stick, you had no helper of any kind to help you get around? Are you going to fall? No way around it. Proverbs 20, verse 20, whoso curseth, watch this, young people, listen up, whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Is this Bible right? We have a generation of children that curse, literally with their mouth, curse their mother. I'm talking about nine and ten year old children who will openly curse their own parents for not giving them everything they want. For wanting to take away their, their games and their toys and their chips and soda pops and everything else that they think that they have a right to. And then they grow up and then they turn 25 years old, 28 years old, 30 years old, still living in mom and daddy's basement, feeding off mom and daddy living off of them and cursing them because they won't give them everything they want. That's a big deal in this country. Daniel chapter 8, verse 23, Daniel predicted in the latter time of their kingdom when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. His mouth is going to be... Here, watch this now. Here's the opposite. Here's Christ, and His words that come out are light. And those who believe the Bible, we have light. When we read this Bible, God is shining light on us and showing us things. Amen? You're reading your Bible, and all of a sudden you read something, and God shows you something, and just the hair stands up on the back of your neck. And sometimes a little tear comes to your eye, because you're going, man, that is so wonderful, God, why'd you show me that? That's God, that's light, that's what he does. We read this Bible and out of his mouth comes words of light. The Antichrist and his spirit, which is already at work, what comes out of his mouth are dark words. Vain words. Like the witch. In case you don't know, I posted on Facebook Friday evening, the miracle that God did in Kenya. Feeding 675 families for a week. One lady wrote, she was not even in my friends list. I don't know how in the world, I don't know why she's following, but she wrote in a comment and said, basically that it's their own fault that they're hungry. And I fed their how does she put it? They're low thinking. She said that because they think poverty thoughts. Yeah. And Kenneth Copeland, because they think poverty thoughts, that's why they're hungry. And when I fed them, I, I perpetuated their low thinking. And I called her out a witch publicly. And then I wrote her privately and said, you know, you're a witch. And you're teaching witch. Why are you teaching witchcraft on my page? I, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to be nice about it. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be friendly about it. She was trying and everybody else caught on to that too. They said, you're, you're teaching witchcraft what you're doing. The dark sentences are already coming out. And the spirit of Antichrist is already there. 
And these rulers of the darkness of this world are in every place where the word of God is not. And I'm telling you that since we started feeding these people, the devils have come out. How do you know you're near a beehive? You don't have to listen. You don't have to seek them out. They know you're there and they let you know that they're, that they're around. And when you start getting too close to their hive, to their queen, they're going to come out mean and aggressive. And we know that we have hit a stronghold of the devil in that community. Uh, what was the name of it? I asked Michael to send me the name. And I'm not going to pronounce it right. Nau Village, N-A-Y-U-U Village. And we figured out it's about 35, 36 miles, something like that outside of where our radio station is and our reach is all the way out there and we've hit a stronghold of the devil and we felt it and I like it okay I'm like a guy that gets hit and he stands back up and he gets hit again he stands back up he gets hit again he stands back up don't lay down for him people I know that's, that's talk, and I'm, but God, God will give you the grace. Okay? Uh, let me read a couple more verses. I'm going to cut you loose. Amos 5, 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion in a bear med. Now, who's the lion? Who's the bear? He's talking about the Antichrist. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent met him. Who's that? Who's the dragon? Satan. Satan. And the dragon gives the Antichrist his power and his seat in a great authority. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? Now, God's saints, listen to me. There's going to come a day when the light that is shined in this world is going to go out on the Gentile world. It will be then that God's saints are going to shine as lights in the darkness of this world. It is going to be then. So get ready for God to turn out the lights on the Gentile world. Let me give you an example of this. Take a look up here. This, this is the world. Amen, Chris? It's round. Hey, keep praying for Brother Adam. He is fighting the fight, people. He is fighting the fight. And he is taking these flat earthers on. I love him. You pray for him. Lift him up. Because they hate him. And they want him destroyed. And they're throwing everything they can at him. To get him to shut up. And I appreciate him not taking it. Okay? Or not, he's not, he's keep standing for it. John 11, it was always interesting to me that Jesus said this when he said it. Because it's in the context of, they're talking about Lazarus and how Lazarus is sick. And then all of a sudden, Jesus pops up with this statement. Verse 9, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? And you think about that. Because right now, see that number 12, we're in the age of the apostles. 12 apostles. Israel is the 12 tribes. It's like my 12, it's like my 24 ribs. 12 represents Gentiles, 12 represents Israel. And here's my heart, just to the left of center. The heart of Jesus was, he had his tribes on his heart when he was raised up on the cross okay but right now the gentile half of the world is in light but the jews are in darkness just like just like that what you see on the screen there's a very clear division between the new testament and the old testament and we know that the veil is over the old testament and Israel right now is in darkness. 
but the world turns. So what's going to happen? God's going to turn that thing around. He's going to plunge the Gentile world in darkness. But he's going to shine light to the 12 tribes. That's why he said, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. And right now, Israel cannot see the sun. They cannot see it. We can. We enjoy it. We are in the 12 hours of the day. But it's going to move. And then Israel is going to see the sun and they're not going to stumble any longer. If a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. So get ready. If you think it's bad now, wait. It's like weather in Missouri. If you think it's bad now, just wait. It's going to get worse. And I really do believe that as God turns the Gentile world into darkness, we are going to shine in that world. God, they, we don't know right now, if you look across, this, the world is full of churches. Who's Christians in them? Who's saved in them? Can't tell. But when the world turns and there's going to be darkness on the Gentile world, it's going to be known then who are the real saints because they're going to shine as lights in the world. That's what the Bible says. So get ready because the rulers of the darkness of this world are fixing to change and they're going to be done with Israel and then they're going to rule over the Gentile world. And the Gentile world is going, going to lift up the Antichrist. Okay? And then it's going to be known who the light is and who isn't. All right? Are you in the light? Do you know the light? Believe the light. See the light. Let the light shine in you, to you, and through you, and out of you. Amen? Stand to your feet. Then, next Sunday night, Jared Lewis told me a story. And I believe it. And when he told it to me, I immediately thought, spiritual wickedness in high places. Think about levels that humans put each other on. Do you think that those who are in power believe that they can do evil things and get away with it because they're in high power? I didn't hear anybody say no, so... That is probably in every place. Any place where there is high authority, people tend to think that they can do things that nobody else can do and get away with it. So there is always going to be wickedness in high places. Father, in Jesus' name, keep us low while we're on this earth. We know, Father, that one day you're going to exalt your church and you'll bring us and change us and transform us, Father, so we will shine with Jesus as lights in this world. But right now, Father, help us, keep us from being lofty. Help us, dear God, to be humble. Help us, dear God, to not ever find ourselves in the high places where wickedness goes on. Help us, dear God, to never think that we can just sin and get away with it and do whatever we want to. God chastise us for that. Bring us down, Father. Help us to be lights in this world, especially this time of year. God, on December 25th, when all the families are gathered together, Father, let your people shine even to their lost relatives, their lost sons, their lost daughters. Lost cousins, aunts, uncles, grandfathers. Help us, dear God, to shine and not be partakers of their darkness. Help us to do it simply and humbly, but help us to do it, Father. 
Bless your word. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight.